3.4 velocity and other rates of change. Your objective for this lesson is to use derivatives to solve problems involving velocity and other rates of change. We're going to go ahead and start off with example one. This is a little bit of review. Part A says to find the rate of change of the area A of a circle with respect to its radius R. So I'm going to start out by just writing the formula for the area of a circle. You should know this one, uh, A equals pi R squared. Remember, this is a constant. And I could go back, I could use the long formula that we had, the F of A plus H minus F of A over H, but that's really long. So remember rate of change, we're talking about your first derivative. And I'm going to use my shortcut. So I'm going to take this 2 and multiply it by the constant already there, that's a pi. So we get 2 pi r to the first, okay? Uh, but I don't have to write that one. So my derivative dA over dr, rate of change with respect to the radius, um, is 2 pi r. Okay. Evaluate the rate of change a at r equals 5 and r equals 10. So here we're going to take that derivative so derivative of the area with respect to the radius we said was 2 pi r, which also happens to be the circumference of a circle, right? And we're going to plug in a 5 for r, and we get, so this is r equals 5, and we get 10 pi. And when r equals 10, we plug in a 10 for r, and we get 20 pi. So that is pretty basic, pretty easy. If you wanted a decimal, you could just put that into your calculator. I'm just going to leave them like that. In part C, if R is measured in inches and A is measured in square inches, what units would be appropriate for uh, your derivative, your first derivative, dA, dr? Okay, and to answer this question, we really need to think about what this derivative means. So when we say dA on top, this is the rate of change of the area of the circle. And the dr stands for um, with respect to the radius. So this is with respect to the radius r. So if we look at the area, this would be measured in square inches. So square inches. And this is, the radius is measured in inches. So really, if we read this here, you're not going to like cancel the inches, but your unit is square inches per inch. Okay, so top per bottom, but don't cancel those units out and this will be our unit for our rate of change. Okay, instantaneous velocity. We have talked about this before um, and we do have some formulas for that. You can see that the instantaneous velocity or other velocity is the derivative of the position function s equals f of t with respect to time. So it is the first derivative. At time t, the velocity is v of t equals ds dt 
which is equal to the limit as the change in t is approaching zero of f of t plus delta t minus f of t over delta t. So this is saying displacement or uh, how far you've gone over travel time. So how, distance over time. Velocity tells you how fast an object is moving, but it also tells you the direction in which it is moving. You would have heard of this if um, you've taken a physics class before. So basically, if an object is moving forward, um, then velocity is positive. So when your position is increasing, velocity is positive. And when an object is moving backward, or if it's falling, then your s is decreasing and your velocity will be negative. So negative doesn't mean that you're slowing down, it just changes the direction that you're moving in. Velocity is different from speed because speed is the absolute value of velocity. So a speedometer on your car shows you speed. Um, it doesn't show you what direction you're moving in. And speed measures the rate of motion regardless of direction. So it is absolute value of V of T, absolute value of DSTT. That is speed. So speed and velocity are different in calculus and in physics. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So derivative of velocity with respect to time. If a body's velocity at time t is v of t equals ds dt, then the body's acceleration at time t is a of t equals dv dt, which is your second derivative of the position function. So second derivative of the position function. In this formula, this is another one that is good to know. Um, it's really not too tricky. The distance a body released from rest falls freely is proportional to the square of the amount of time it has fallen. So if you, this is like if you drop an object from the top of a tall building, this is your distance that it's fallen, um, and it's one half times g, which is the gravitational uh, constant for Earth times time squared. So, and down here we have those free fall constants. It depends on whether you're using feet or meters. So if you're using feet, g is 32 feet per second squared, okay? Um, or you might see s would be equal to 16 t squared because this is that one half that you see floating right here. So if you say one half times the gravitational constant, you'll just have a 16. Um, and if you're using the metric system, then 9.8 meters per second squared is your g, or one half of that would be 4.9 t squared. Okay, example two. A dynamite blast propels a heavy rock straight up with a launch velocity of 160 feet per second, which is about 109 miles per hour, pretty fast. It reaches a height of s equals 160 t minus 16 t squared feet after t seconds. So this is our position function. And we want to know how high does the rock go? And to help figure this out, we're going to look at this little graph right here. There is a better version of this graph in your book on page 126 on the margin. This is my very rough sketch. Um, we know that this is going to be an upside down parabola because you do have a t squared 
that is your um, highest degree in your polynomial, so it is a parabola, and there is a minus in front of that 16, so it is a downward facing parabola. You could also think about if you were to throw a ball or a rock, then it is going to take this parabola shape. Um, and at the highest point here, if I were to draw a line tangent to this graph, like so, you see the slope of this line is zero. So that would be when the first derivative is equal to zero, or the velocity equals zero. So the slope here is zero. So let's go ahead and calculate the velocity. We know v is equal to ds dt, which is the same as d dt of our function. So we have 160 t minus 16 t squared. And I'm going to use my derivative shortcuts here. So I have a t to the first power, so that t is just going to go away. I'm left with 160 minus 16 times 2 is 32t. So my velocity is 160 minus 32t. But I'm looking for the time, not the time, sorry, I'm looking for the height of the rock. So um, I'm going to set my velocity equal to 0 to figure out when I'm at the maximum height. And then I'm going to go back and plug that into the original formula. So, uh, first step. 160 minus 32t equals 0. Subtract 160. So negative 32t is equal to negative 160. Now we're going to divide by negative 32. And t equals 5. So at t equals 5, I am at the maximum height. But that doesn't tell me how high the rock goes. I need to go back and plug into my position formula, and that will tell me my height. So we have s of 5. We have 160 times 5 minus 16 5 squared. So 160 times 5 is 800. And this is minus 16 times 25, which is 400, which leaves me at 400. So at 5 seconds, I am 400 feet up in the air. So my rock is 400 feet. Okay. Part B, what is the velocity and speed of the rock when it is 256 feet above the ground on the way up and also on the way down? So again, remember we have our equation S of t is equal to 160t minus 16t squared. So, and we're given s of t, we're given 256. Okay, so we can solve this equation. Um, I'm going to move these to the other side. So minus 160t plus 16t squared. That makes everybody positive. Well, not everybody, but makes my square positive. So 16t squared minus 160t plus 256 is equal to zero. 
and we put those over there so that um, every term is on the same side. This is a quadratic. We want it set equal to zero to solve the quadratic. And I'm going to solve by factoring. Um, so I'm factoring out a 16 first, left with t squared minus 10t plus 16. And now we just have to factor this trinomial, you know, trinomial factors to two sets of parentheses. So we have t's in the front and in the back. Uh, we're going to have the same sign, both negative, same sign, both negative. And an 8 and a 2 will give me a 16 in the back and a 10 in the front. So this is what we have. Set each factor equal to 0. You know 16 equals 0 isn't going to give you anything. You can throw that out. t minus 8 is 0. And t minus 2 is 0. So we're left with t is 8 or t is 2. And these two t's really just tell us the times at which the rock is 256 feet in the air. So that still hasn't answered our questions. We need to find velocity and speed. So the next thing that I need to do, I already have the derivative of this function from part A. So we figured that was 160 minus 32t. Okay. So, v of t is 160 minus 32t. And um, this one is on the way up. This is on the way down. So, t equals 2 is the way up. t equals 2 is the way down. You know that because, again, um, we were at the maximum velocity. Not maximum velocity. We were at the maximum height at t equals 5. So t equals 2 is before t equals 5. That means it's on the way up. And 8 is after 5, so that's the way down. So on the way up, I'm going to plug in 2 into my velocity function. And I get 160 minus 64, which is 96 feet per second. Okay, and then I'm going to plug in the 8 for this. And we get negative 96 feet per second. Okay, so on the way up, you are moving not you, sorry, the rock is moving at 96 feet per second. That is its velocity. This is also its speed. So this is velocity and speed. It is speed because it is a positive number. And remember, speed is absolute value of velocity. In this case, that would be the same number. Um, on the way down, your Move in the opposite direction, so your sign has changed. So this is the velocity, negative 96 feet per second. But the speed would be the absolute value of that. That would be 96 feet per second. Part C, what is the acceleration of the rock at any time t during its flight? after the blast. So this is basically asking you for the third derivative. So uh, we had, I'm just going to start with velocity. So velocity was 160 minus, not 60, minus 32t. And now we want to find the derivative of velocity. So acceleration is dv over dt, which is d dt of 160 minus 32t. So this is going to go away. 
and that t basically goes away, so we're just left with a negative 32 feet per second squared. And notice that um, velocity of the units is feet per second, but acceleration is feet per second squared. So we have here our units are feet per second on top and on the bottom time is still second. So we have feet per second per second, which is feet per second squared, and that's where the units are coming from. Part D, when does the rock hit the ground? So this is asking you, when does S equal zero? So when is the position of the rock zero? Position is talking about the up-down position. And this is your original equation. So 160t minus 16t squared set it equal to zero. And I'm going to factor out 16t, so I'm left with 10 minus t. I can set each of these factors equal to zero. Over here, I can divide by 16, and I get t is zero. And I can add a t to both sides here and get t is 10. Okay, so you are at a zero, height of zero, at t is zero and t is 10. But this is when you launched the rock. So that's the launch, which means that it hits the ground again at t equals 10. So this would be 10 seconds would be your answer. Okay. That is it for 3.4. Um, so we talked about we talked about your position function s of t its first derivative is velocity and its second derivative is acceleration. Uh, in 3.5, we'll actually talk about the third derivative, but this is all for now.